click the record option. Um, so everyone, my name is Miranda Johnson. I'm the office manager at CSC Pasadena. Um, and uh, throughout the class, um, we will be muting most people in attendance uh, to reduce any background noise. Um, I encourage all of you to unmute yourself to unmute yourselves to ask questions or type questions in the chat. Um, so since we are recording, um, the class will be, uh, like I said, recorded, but the presenter's screen will be spotlighted um, and uh, people's uh, faces, their videos will not be seen. It'll just be the presenter. Um, and then throughout the class, I will also be sending you a quick message just in case I need to um, confirm what your name is for when I take attendance. Um, and then we will also do a workshop review poll at the end of the workshop. Um, so I will start that right after the end of the presentation. Um, and then I would also like to introduce Dr. Chu. Um, so Robert Chu is a licensed acupuncturist and herbalist specializing in the master tongue painless acupuncture me methods in which he effectively treats pain, neuromusculoskeletal disorders, and a wide variety of internal diseases, including high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, gynecological disorders, such as menstrual disorders, PMS, and infertility, Parkinson's disease, and side effects from cancer treatments. He is appointed by the Industrial Medical Council as a qualified medical evaluator. Dr. Chu is formerly affiliated with the St. Vincent Medical Center as the first full-time acupuncturist on staff and treated cancer patients with acupuncture, herbal ther therapy, um, King Gong and Tai Chi. Dr. Chu regularly volunteers at Pasadena's Cancer Support Community where he does a weekly stress reduction class and monthly lifestyle nutrition class. He has also been featured as a speaker for the American Cancer Society. In July of 2004, Dr. Chu was selected as the acupuncturist to Olympic athletes at the Olympic trials held in Sacramento. Dr. Chu also lectures nationally and abroad on acupuncture and Chinese medicine to provide continuing education to MDs and acupuncturists. In 2005, he founded ITARA, International Tongues Acupuncture Research Association, to pr preserve, standardize, educate, and research new applications of the tongue family system of acupuncture with integrity and open sharing. ITARA has now grown with branches throughout the United States, Canada, UK, and Finland. He has lectured at Samra University, Emperor's College, um, SCUSOMA, ACAOM, CSOMA, AAOMA, and other functions as a dynamic and entertaining speaker. Dr. Chu regularly lectures at Emperor's College in Santa Monica, five branches in San Jose, University of East West Medicine in Sunnyvale, California as an adjunct professor. He also supervises externs at the Roy and Patricia Disney Family Cancer Center in Burbank. Um, so welcome Dr. Chu and um, we can you. get started. Thank you. Miranda, if you could give me uh, permission to record too. Yes. Fantastic. Please, Thank you so much. Yes. Um, so I've, I've clicked the, the recording option on my end. Okay. Uh, you can send me uh, a, a recording later. It's not a problem. Okay. Sounds great. Thank you. Thank you. We'll just get started. Okay. Well, thank you so much for having me. I, I've been with the cancer support community for the last, oh, 19 years now. So uh, I've been a feature in Pasadena and pretty much uh, uh, since I've uh, opened my practice in Pasadena about 20 years ago, um, you know, I, I certainly uh, did lecturing. I did a monthly uh, or weekly Qigong class, uh, 50 weeks out of the year, unbelievable. So long time, but that stopped uh, last May, uh, no, last March when we were on lockdown. And then I haven't been able to do it since. And uh, they've asked me to do it on, online on Zoom. If there's an interest, maybe we'll, we'll record a class a month and then maybe uh, it can be broadcasted. And so we'll, we'll still consider it. And I always did a monthly complementary and alternative medicine uh, in cancer treatment uh, class on Thursday nights. So this has typically been the time. So I'm lucky to do it on Zoom uh, because I'm a lecturer at the acupuncture colleges. I'm very familiar with Zoom. I have you on two uh, computers so I can answer your chats or read your chats if you have questions or you can unmute yourself and then uh, ask me your questions. But this is your 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 time and uh, I'm going to talk about different things. Okay, so let's get started. Okay, so here's my fun uh, grumpy cat. Uh, exercise, eat healthy, and get proper rest. 
no, we got to go anyway someday, okay? But uh, I just want you to know there's a lot of things that we can do, all right? And uh, Larry King, in, on September 10th, 2009, he was uh, interviewing Dr. Andrew Weil. Now, Andrew Weil, you might have know him. He's a big guy, looks like Santa Claus. He's the founder of the integrated medicine movement. And uh, Larry was interviewing him because he had written a book back then. And uh, he's, he asked him, Dr. Weil, if you were king, what would you do? He said, well, we don't have the healthcare industry in this country. We have a disease management system that's horribly dysfunctional and getting worse by the day. And the vast majority of disease that we're trying to manage is lifestyle related and therefore preventable. Now, what are these lifestyle related diseases? Do we know? Yeah, the modern diseases, and these include what? Obesity or uh, pre pre-diabetic syndrome, or metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, high cholesterol, diabetes, and cancer, okay? And it usually goes in that order, you know? I have to say, modern living is very difficult for all of us. Um, for cancer treatment, chemo, radiation, and surgery are not enough, okay? Because why? You have the most powerful cancer fighting machine of all. Before you were diagnosed, you know, you produce cancer cells daily. What happens? Your body eats them, okay? And so, you know, for people to say the only cures for cancer are chemo, radiation, and surgery, it's not quite true because the human body, if you optimize their health, it is the best cancer fighting uh, machine available, okay? And it's all natural. Uh, but one, one needs dietary and lifestyle advice. And maybe I'll say some things that you won't be happy with, but uh, you have to understand myself as an acupuncturist, I'm a lifestyle consultant. And um, I'll give you an idea of what, what I do here and uh, what we can do for uh, taking care of uh, diet and uh, nutrition and lifestyle, okay? All right, so let's look here. This is a, a little, uh, <coughs> graph that I made. Let's look at disease, okay? And disease is related to different things in our life. Poor diet and nutrition, a lack of exercise, emotional factors, so lack of sleep, trauma, stress, fashion. Yeah, fashion can cause disease. Yeah, I'm not the fashion police, but what I mean here is dressing correctly uh, for the weather. For example, today's a kind of cold day today, right? I mean, it was nice in the daytime, but as it's getting uh, colder uh, at night, you know, we shouldn't be wearing flip-flops and, uh, and shorts, okay, and, and a t-shirt. You got to wear something warmer. So, of course, disease can affect our health. Then we have genetic factors, okay. Now, people may have a family that comes from diabetics, uh, and you might have a gene uh, for that, but however, it won't happen if you eat right and exercise and keep a normal uh, BMI, all right, and then of course there's environmental factors, weather, toxins, pollutions, electromagnetic field, radiation, other things like that, they all cause it. And some of these are interrelated as well. For example, you know, if uh, let's say I don't get enough sleep, I go to work, my boss gives me a, a lot of stress, okay, well, I get into a car accident, I sprain my back and my, my ankle, I'm certainly not gonna feel happy about this. I'm not gonna be sleeping. I might be ruminating about what's going on. That gives me more stress. Then I'm certainly not gonna to go to gym and exercise. And then to make myself feel better, I'll open up a bag of uh, potato chips, okay? And, and other things, so I'll, I'll eat poorly, all right? And so this will lead to uh, more problems. And you know, as Dr. Wild was saying, if we, uh, can manage our lifestyle, then we can have better health. So really, what is, what, is the, uh, what is the secret? The secret to reversing the disease is the opposite of these. Have good diet and nutrition, do exercise, have a good emotional state, sleep properly, okay? Avoid trauma, uh, relax and stress less, uh, dress appropriately for the weather, don't set off genetic triggers, and then keep your environment as clean as possible. And for cancer patients, there's a lot of things. So we can talk about those. Okay. So all of this is for discussion. Um, I'd like to keep it uh, interactive with you guys. So if you have questions, you know, please, uh, please let me know. Okay. Well, let's move on. 
So as I mentioned, uh, the pillars to good health are the following and uh, exactly the opposite as to what I was talking about, what was pathogenic, okay? Now, <clears throat> a lot of things people don't do is uh, eat veggies, okay? Now, veggies is the best thing, according to Michael Pollan, who wrote a book called Food Rules. The single best thing to improve your health is eating more veggies, not taking more diet, uh, supplements, not taking more vitamins, not taking vitamin D, not, uh, you know, taking magnesium or calcium supplements, but really the most important thing is eat more veggies. Now, what, what are veggies? Most people don't know. Okay. Uh, if uh, we were in person, I'd ask around the room, you know, what veggies did you eat today? Okay. And a lot of people don't eat veggies at all, even though they think they do. For example, they eat squash, they eat beans, green beans, they eat corn, they eat tomatoes, okay? Not one of those things I've mentioned is a vegetable yet. What are vegetables? Vegetables are those dark green, leafy, slightly bitter to the taste uh, things. You know, the stuff that you don't like, okay? When you go to a salad bar, well, we can't go to any more salad bars, but uh, you know, these are things that you wouldn't fill your plate with necessarily. But as a cancer patient and as a patient with modern diseases, this is something that you'd wanna do. Uh, here we are, what, what are we talking about? Broccoli, romaine lettuce, kale, mescaline, mustard greens, spinach, uh, turnip greens, watercress, collard greens, okay, bok choy, if you like, okay? And by broccoli, I don't mean uh, the floret type of broccoli that most people eat, you know, the, the, the green cauliflower, so to speak. I'm talking about eating broccoli, stems and leaves, okay? Most people don't ever see them, don't ever eat them, okay? Uh, Asian people eat them all the time, but you know, it's something that you have to uh, look around. Maybe you got to walk around Whole Foods, okay, and uh, look at what those green leafy things are. Probably they're all slightly bitter to the taste, okay, and your best bet is gourmet salad greens. Now, how do you know it's gourmet salad greens? Does anyone know? Okay, you know gourmet salad greens because it does not contain iceberg lettuce in it, okay? Anything that does not have iceberg lettuce is gourmet salad greens, okay? Iceberg lettuce is basically crisp water, doesn't have much uh, nutritional value. So I would say that's one of the things. So if, uh, if I asked around the room, okay, which one of you had a serving of, of veggies yesterday or had a serving of veggies today, how many of you would say yes? Yeah, maybe write it in the chat room. Uh, I encourage you, okay? Tell me the truth, okay? How many of you are eating veggies? Because veggies are the single best thing to improve your health. Now, uh, the other habit that you have to learn is what? Shop around the periphery of the supermarket. Don't shop in the aisles. The aisles is where all the packaged foods are. Shop around the periphery. That is, you look at your fresh vegetables and fruits, your meats, your dairy, okay? Those are things that you want to uh, look into, all right? And then, uh, you know, that's where you're gonna be shopping, all right? So if you have a chance, buy the book, Food Rules. It's a little pamphlet. It's probably like seven or eight bucks. It's, it's a good read. You can probably find it in a used bookstore at this time, all right? And for those of you who are on chemo fatigue, you know who you are, okay? I would highly recommend take a B complex okay and make sure it's time release okay B complex and you want to you don't want to do this every day maybe three times a, a week four times a week is fine every other day but you don't have to take it every day okay because why if you're eating the veggies you get all your B vitamins you don't need any more okay and the other thing is take your probiotics what are probiotics those are those liquid things that you have to go to Whole Foods for. And uh, they taste kind of like yogurt, but maybe not, all right? And they come in little refrigerated vials and you drink them down, okay? And that gives you, and it populates your intestinal flora, okay? Why do you wanna do that? Because chemo acts like a antibiotic. It kills your intestinal flora. So as a result of that, you're going to have lots of problems, okay, in terms of digesting and getting um, energy. And so that will certainly help you. 
Food enzymes can also help you greatly as a cancer patient. Why? Food enzymes, they have bromelain, like from uh, pineapples or papayan. Uh, they will help you digest your foods and break it down better. Now, here's a, here's a secret for cancer patients. You know what the secret is? Secret is eat. Uh, you want to eat about half of two hands, okay? So let's say this is a normal meal, your two hands, not my two hands, I got big hands, but uh, your two hands is about uh, one sitting. But because you're undergoing uh, treatment, it's very hard for you to do it. So you wanna eat one half of that, one portion, half of this, okay? It's one handful, one cup full, okay? And that will do it, all right? And you wanna eat that maybe six times a day, okay because why you can't handle it when you're when you're eating big meals you develop chemo brain when you eat big meals you know what chemo brain is anyone have chemo brain yet okay chemo brain is when you can't remember your where your glasses are you're looking all over for your glasses you say where's my glasses where's my glasses i can't find my glasses where are they all right and you don't know where your keys are. You don't know where your wallet is. You don't know where your cell phone is. You don't know where your shoes are. You don't know where your socks are, right? Why? Because you're overwhelmed with the toxins that you get from uh, chemotherapy, all right? And it's very tiring. Uh, chemo brain is a real phenomenon, okay? And I would have to say, drink the best water that you can. Now, all water bottled is reverse osmosis water. Okay, and anyone have a Brita filter? Anyone have one of those refrigerator filters they get their water from? Anyone have the filter that goes on top of the tap of the sink? Anyone have a bottle where you have a filter and you just pour water in? Okay, those are not good. All right, sorry, <laughs> I, don't, I don't mean to offend anyone here, but those are not the best uh, filtration systems. The best filtration system is a reverse osmosis filter. And what companies like, what, Crystal Geyser, uh, Dasani, uh, all of these are, they, they are just giving you reverse osmosis water and then adding in some salts to, to purify your water. The more pure your water, the more tasteless it will be. The more tasteless it'll be, you have no, no minerals in, the, in it, and it, it won't taste good, it'll taste flat. So what you want to do is get some sort of reverse osmosis water. Now, people ask me all the time, Dr. Chu, what if I get Kangen water? What if I get highly ionized water? Okay. Uh, if you're going to drink more water, I'll say that's the most important thing. Because your pH of your water, it doesn't mean if your water is more alkaline that you'll be healthier, it'll fight cancer. I want you to know that's a gimmick. Actually, drinking more water is better for your health than you know, right next to eating more veggies, okay? Again, nobody likes to hear what I'm saying. Drink water, more water, what? You know, eat veggies, what? You know, what are you saying, Dr. Chu? Are you crazy? All right, so I want you to know. Other filtration systems, they can filter out dirt and dust and soot and other stuff like that. But if you ever do a search on LA water, you'll know we've got crazy things in our water. Like crazy what? What do we know? Antidepressants, antipsychotic medications are actually in the water. You can't believe it, right? And other types of minerals and other weird things. We have especially hard water, a lot of calcium in the water. So what you wanna do is kind of avoid that or else you wanna have a purification system. And you can get a inexpensive reverse osmosis system that you can get at Home Depot and it's about $300. You don't have to spend you know, a few thousand dollars, three thousand dollars for a Kangen water system in your home. Okay, I want you to know that. All right, any good water is generally reverse osmosis water, and bottled water has just salts in it to to flavor it up. Okay, and that's that's the main difference. Now, I want to say, people are going to ask me, what should I eat for breakfast? Then, what should I eat for lunch? What should I eat for dinner? You know what? For breakfast, eat a protein with some veggies. Now, veggies, again, go to the top of, of, of this slide. Those are what veggies are, okay? And if you want to eat with some mushrooms, you want to eat some peppers and onions, yeah, sure, add it in, okay? 
but have some eggs with that, with veggies, okay? Make a frittata, make an omelet, whatever. Make something nice. Have some fruits, fresh fruits. Have some nuts. If you're allergic to nuts, don't have nuts, okay? Uh, and then that's breakfast. And then for, for dinner and lunch, lunch and dinner, then it's a mixed green salad and some sort of protein, okay? And then you can dress it up with fruits and nuts and other types of uh, things like cucumbers, tomatoes, mushrooms, whatever. Anything you like to add, just add it. That's your sta staple. If that can be your staple, you're already doing very, very good, okay? So I want you to know. That's, uh, that's already excellent. And don't take too many vitamins, okay? Don't take too many vitamins because vitamins, you're just, unless you're starving and you're not eating well, vitamins are just usually peed out. My joke is what? If you have all of this vitamin A, vitamin B, B1, B2, B3, B12, uh, vitamin C, vitamin D, vitamin E, it just becomes vitamin P. Okay, haha, -ha. all right, bad joke. But uh, I just want you to understand that's exactly what happens when you have too many vitamins. Your body just gets rid of it, it doesn't need it, okay? So it, like I said, if you take a vitamin every other day, that's already good because I'm teaching you how to eat well. And you don't need calcium. If you do need calcium, then take calcium citrate, okay? Citrate, it has to have some sort of citric acid with it in order for you to improve your, um, in order to improve your, your absorption rate, okay? If you take calcium carbonate, it's really not gonna help you a lot. And in fact, you know, when, when you see that silly commercial about Tums, Tums contains calcium. That kind of calcium is very hard to absorb. You hardly absorb it. So I want you to understand, uh, if you're gonna take calcium, make sure it's calcium citrate again, okay? Now, some of you have joint pain, so you're taking glucosamine, chondroitin, MSM. I want you to be aware of those things. What do you have to be aware of? Is that those things can allow you to, to get your cholesterol up, right? And if you have a seafood allergy, you have to be careful about taking those things as well, as well because they're often uh, seafood derived, okay? All right, so Rita filter, I, I highly do not reckon, I recommend it because I think it's worthless. Uh, company sources of water. I mean, you can go to the water store, your local water store, that's fine. Now, protein shakes, I want you to know, most people do uh, shakes. All it does is uh, hurt your body, okay? It's too much of a good thing and too many calories. And most people don't do what Jack Lane did. And you guys remember Jack Lane, the most the world's most fittest man. He used to uh, advertise for the Magic Bullet late at night on on cable TV with his wife. And what did he do? He would uh, juice kale. He would juice spinach, and he'd have maybe two ounces of kale, two ounces of spinach. Nobody likes to drink that stuff. What do you guys do? You make a protein shake. You put protein powder in it. You put milk. You put uh, some sugar in it, and maybe you put some other sweetener. You put some strawberries, blueberries, blackberries, pineapple, banana, apple. Okay, you know what you're doing? You're putting in hundreds of calories, okay? Too much sugar for your body. And when you drink that type of thing, what you can do is injure your body. You have, first of all, a big sugar dump. And second of all, what happens is if you have protein powder on top of it, what happens is you could possibly injure your kidneys because of too much protein powder. So I want you to know, it's not a good idea for protein shakes, okay? Not unless you're gonna be like Jacqueline Lee. Juice two ounces of uh, kale. Let's see any of you drink, drink two ounces of kale. I, I dare you. I don't believe anyone of, of you will do it. You know why? It tastes horrible, okay? Nobody likes it, but that was the guy who knew how to do it. But most people who do it, amateurs, Jamba Juice, uh, other uh, shake places, forget about it, okay? No, no good, all right? Just eat the veggies, eat the salads, eat those things that I, that I tell you to. Now, the major problem in our life is what? Carbs, we eat too many carbs. Chips, pizza, bread, breadsticks, pasta, rice, tortillas, burritos, tacos, soft drinks. Admit it, you guys do this, okay? 
These are the simple carbs. You don't need these things, okay? You need the complex carbs of vegetables and fruits to stay alive, okay? Roughly 30 to 40% to meals per meal. But if you're eating things like this over here and you know who you are, you gotta stop it now, okay? For people who have hypertension, high cholesterol, diabetes, pre-diabetic uh, syndrome, other types of problems like this, you have cancer, stop it, okay? Because sugar feeds cancer, it is true, all right? And start becoming a label reader. What does that mean? It means, yes, bring your glasses when you go to the supermarket. You have to read the labels. You have to see what's going on. If there's hidden sugars like high fructose corn syrup, you don't want it. Uh, if you have... Uh, Things that you can't pronounce, that's a good tip off, okay? Things that are artificial color, flavor, sweeteners, preservatives, okay? Uh, enriched white flour, trans fatty acids, triglycerides, you wanna avoid these things, okay? Be a label reader. When you become a label reader, you start eating things that are healthier for yourself. I know it takes more time. I know, uh, you know, when you're wearing a mask and you're wearing glasses, they're gonna get steamed up, okay? My advice is bring a tissue, right, along with gloves so that you're, when you're touching cans and uh, you have a chance to wipe your glasses, then wipe your glasses, okay, because you're going to have to read it. These manufacturers deliberately make the labels tiny so that you can't read them, okay? All right, anyway, let's continue on. Eat more foods without labels, organic foods like fruits, carrot sticks. Now, carrot sticks used to be my favorite thing. But when my daughter was a little, little baby, I'd give her carrot sticks to snack on. Now, most of you probably know by now that baby carrots are really not baby carrots. What they are is re-shredded carrots, reprocessed carrots, right? The, the reject carrots, they put it in to a food uh, processor, shave off the bad skin, and make them all uniform. Because tiny carrots are really, really tiny. They don't look like that. Okay, and what they call baby organic carrots in the store are usually given a beach bla uh, bleach bath and made as such. So carrots, I can villainize, but if you make your own carrot sticks, you cut it up yourself, you'd be a lot happier, okay? Cut up celery, you know? If you wanna have a dip, all right, go ahead. Don't, don't, don't go crazy, but have some. Almonds, unsalted, unflavored almonds, very good. Walnuts, very good. Raisins, very good. Dried fruits, you can have them, but be careful because what? It's too much sulfur dioxide in it and too much added sugar. Now, sulfur dioxide, you may not know, is one of the components of Agent Orange, okay? And which we know from the Vietnam War era. What do we know about Agent Orange? It's toxic, it's cancerous, right? So we don't want to have that. All right. So you guys follow me so far? Okay. I don't see anything else in, in the chats. I'm not sure what Socorro Silva is. Is, is that a person's name? Yes. She okay. All right. With her name. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, if you want to limit yourself to one day a week of eating what you want without worry. Okay. That means if you got to have your Twinkie, Go have your Twinkie. You need a chocolate bar? You need a Hershey's bar? Fine, have it. You need a Snickers bar? Go ahead, do it. You want to eat at McDonald's for that one day? Go ahead and do it. I'm not going to stop you, okay? But if you eat this the other six days a week, very clean and healthy, that's fine. You like to go to Dickie's and have barbecue? Have barbecue that one day, okay? Eat what you like, okay? Because why? I don't want my ears to be all red. You know, my ears will get all red and the, the people will say, darn Dr. Chu, I want to eat a candy bar. He's not telling, he doesn't allow me to eat a candy bar. Well, you know, I, I just told you, you can have a day off, all right? Just don't make the day off every day, okay? <laughs> That's all I have to say. All right, now, eat about two thirds full. What does that mean? Two thirds, your stomach can actually hold three of these cups that you make with your hands, okay? So two thirds of those are two of these, okay? And that's how much you can eat per meal, all right? But if you go over that, that's you're kind of overeating. So you have to be careful, 
A lot of people don't realize they eat too much protein, all right? In order to survive, and I'm just talking about bare minimum survival, you only need 0.2 grams per kilogram of body weight. So if a woman weighs, a petite woman weighs maybe 50 kilograms, okay? And you only need 0.2 grams, 0.2 times 50 grams, is she only needs 10 grams of protein in a day, okay? For a 100 pound woman, okay? 110 pound woman, 10 grams. How much is 10, 10 grams? It's roughly three tablespoons of protein. Can you imagine that? So we actually eat too much protein, all right? But protein is one of the main constituents of poop. So I want you to know, if you eat very little protein, you will have very little poop. So I just want you to know what's going on over here, right? But many people eat too much protein. So I want you to understand, you don't need, you don't need that much protein, okay? So that's why I say two ounces, two ounces of a, of a steak, two ounces of lean meat, okay? That's very good per meal, all right? It's already very generous, but we often eat too much meat. All right, exercise. Uh, for exercise to be regular, it has to be fun. If nobody likes to exercise, you won't do it. So that's why I say maybe try Tai Chi. You, we used to have a Tai Chi class at the cancer support community. I don't know if we still have it, Miranda. Hmm? That is a new question. I will ask um, okay. our program director. All right, Qigong class. I will try to uh, come back with it. I know you, we also used to have a yoga class, so you know, uh, let's let's try to bring those back. But you want to do something that's fun that engages your mind, and then you do it. Now, I don't want need you to sweat. You don't have to die and pant and kill yourself exercising. You just need to move the blood. Okay, circulate. Now, although it's a fitness goal to do 10,000 steps a day, it's really not realistic. If you get about 6,000 steps a day, that's already very good, okay? 10,000 steps is a nice goal, but it's kind of crazy. You can wear a pedometer, you can wear a watch, you can download an app for your cell phone, up to you, I don't care. But I want you to look at it. Some people only walk 200 steps a day, okay? maybe a thousand steps a day. Come on, people, I'm telling you, get off your butts and walk. Because if you can get off your butts and walk, you'd be a lot happier, okay? And then maybe do some basic weight training. We used to have a, a basic weight training class, okay, strength training class. Deadlift, clean and press are the two exercises you have to master. Maybe we'll come back with that in the next few months. I don't know, all right? But I, I remember the, the, the gentleman who used to have the strength training class. Uh, they used to do it with bands. And deadlift is one of the most important exercises. Clean and press is the, is the other. Okay, you can do these with barbells or dumbbells, or you can do it with bands. It's up to you. 10 reps each, three times a day for the legs, okay? Because your legs are your heart, your, your second and third heart. Your own heart in your chest, it's only good enough for what? to keep your, your body alive while you're lying down or seated. But if you really want to improve your health, you have to move your thighs. Let's say it after me. Exercise is moving your thighs. If it's not moving your thighs, it's not exercise. Or we can also say, all right, move my thighs and that's exercise, okay? All right, so thighs and exercise, you have to understand. That's, that's the most important thing, all right? And if you want to, you could be like me. I made a New Year's resolution. For every patient I see, after I see them, I have to do 10 squats and 10 push-ups. And then I have to do 10 trunk twists, okay? It takes me about 10, two minutes for every hour that I'm awake to do it, okay? So if I see 10 patients a day, uh, I gotta give myself 100 squats, 100 push-ups, 100 trunk twists, that's a lot. So what I do is I do it in between. All exercise is cumulative, okay? So if I do it 10 reps at a time, by the time I do it 10 sets of that, I've already accomplished my goal. So I want you to know, do it like that. That's the easy way to do exercise. Uh, and some of you, you might want to read a book called Atomic Habits. Because if you just make little tiny changes every day, you'll be a lot better. Okay? What is a uh, twist? 
that you're talking okay. about. What uh, are... Let me show you, okay? Thank you. Stand up. This is a trunk twist. So oh. that's one rep, okay? So okay. let's swing my left, swing to the right. That's one. And here's two. Here's three. You know why? Because this loosens up my hips and keeps my waist slim and then loosens up my back. So okay. one of the best things to do. So just do then that. Can you do, can you do wall press instead of getting you down? You can do the wall floor? press. You can do uh, push-ups on your knee. You could do it on a chair, you know? You can hold on to the chair as a beginner. All I care about is you start getting to move because if you can just start moving a little bit, okay, we can do it, right? Uh, I have, uh, you know, I could show you, right? Um, Push-ups, yeah, here, I'm on the desk now and I'm doing 10, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10, okay? That's to start with. Now squats, I'm holding onto the chair. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, that's it. Ten. And then ten trunk twists. Okay, if I do these, that's already a bare minimum. And it's not hard. People sit for six or seven hours, especially with Zoom now. It's way too much. All right? So exercise is moving your thighs. It's so simple. Just do a little bit. Not, not much. All right, questions? All right, good. I'm just checking, checking the messages here. All right, now uh, sleep. Everyone should get six to eight hours sleep. About a third of your life is sleeping, okay? If you need to take a nap during the day, fine, take a half hour nap, but don't go past it because if you start sleeping like a two hour nap, four hour nap, what happens is you're messing up your sleep cycle. All right, so half hour nap, power nap, that's fine. Take it after lunch. It'll make you feel a lot better. Okay, bedtime is sleep time. Bed, bedtime is not thinking time. It's not rumination time. <laughs> it's not reviewing the, all the problems of the day. Don't do that. And then keep regular hours. Sleep, try to sleep before 11. Okay, try to sleep before 11. I know, we're on lockdown, we can sleep anytime, okay? But you know what? Sleep at 11, get up at six, that's seven hours. Sleep at 11, get up at, at seven, that's eight hours, okay? It's very simple, keep regular hours. This is my sleep time, all right? Don't talk, don't have long conversations with your significant other, let's go to sleep. Right? If you think too much, talk too much, not worth it. All right. Now, here's a, a lot of things that you could do. Meditation, yoga. This is something for healthy emotions. If you need therapy, I know Cancer Support Community has some therapists on hand. Uh, you might also consider what? Awareness therapy is a very short type of therapy. I do it. Hypnotherapy, I've trained in it, but you can talk to another hypnotherapist. I can recommend you to other hypnotherapists. There's NLP and there's emotional freedom technique, which is a type of tapping technique. All of these will, will help you in terms of uh, releasing the emotions, uh, releasing the stress. Now, I like this series of books by Eckhart Tolle. He's uh, the author of The Power of Now. It's kind of old now. Uh, he wrote a book called A New Earth, which Oprah Winfrey had featured and has a uh, special on it. I think it's still available online for free. And then there's another book called Stillness Speaks. It's my favorite book. Um, it has a lot of uh, good quotes and uh, short meditations. I say leaders are readers and readers are leaders because why? You really have to manage these things, okay? I highly recommend Mark Hyman's books. He talks about a vegan diet, a paleo vegan diet. And I, I highly recommend his books. The 10 day detox, the blood sugar solution, especially if you have uh, high, high blood sugar or diabetes, eat fat, get fit. Sounds ridiculous, right? But certainly these are, these are good books. And some of the recent books that I've been reading is what? Eat to Beat Disease, right? Pretty good book. 
gives you some good uh, information about different foods for different diseases. Uh, I mentioned the book Atomic Habits. Brain Brain is written by a um, brain surgeon about the dangers of sugar and eating grain. How it can lead to dementia? Oh my gosh, when I read this book, I was terrified. Because why? There's a new syndrome called diabetes type three. The, everyone knows what diabetes type two is, okay? But diabetes type three is dementia, okay? Frightening. Wheat belly, another one who's talking about the dangers of eating grain and what it can do to affect your body, okay? And that tells you pretty much the same thing. Overweight, obesity, pre-diabetic syndrome, high blood pressure, cholesterol, etc. The China study is a little bit old, but it talks about the benefit of the vegetable diet. And then the autoimmune solution. I used to have that in my office. Someone took it. I never saw it again. But a very good book about different types of autoimmune diseases and how you can beat them with, uh, with diet and exercise. And watch movies. If some of you have Netflix, you can watch uh, the various movies, Rotten, Food Inc., Super Size Me, King Corn. These are also available on YouTube. You can take a look at them. Some of them are dated. Some of them are pretty good. And then you can look at any other types of, uh, of uh, documentaries. Educate yourself and the family. You should see my son. I say, hey, you want pizza? He goes, Dad, I don't... I don't want pizza because that's too much carbs. I don't, you know, when, you, when you, your son tells you that, you know you did a good job, all right? So I want you to know that. All right. Learn how to deal with toxic people and emotional vampires. People who have cancer, it's a good thing because why? You tell people like that who are toxic to you or emotional vampires, I have cancer. I need my rest. I need to stay away from you. Okay, I don't mean it exactly in that way. Just be a little bit more subtle, but you know, you want to be, uh, you want to have a good time and, and, and limit yourselves with, with people like this, okay? And then avoid what we call chi stagnation. That means energy stagnation. Things are not moving as well as they should be and you're stuck, all right? Now, here we are. We have a very famous monk, uh, Thich Nhat Han. Okay, he tells you, Breathe in, bring your mind home to your body. You can recognize immediately the many conditions of happiness you already have. You look deeply at your true aspiration and get insight. I don't need to run in the future in order to be happy. Happiness is here for you right now, okay? And how happy can you be? You can just sit and take a deep breath. And by deep breath, you don't take a deep breath with your chest. You take a deep breath with your abdomen, okay? You can even hold your your belly button and take a deep breath in and exhale. Three breaths to cleanse yourself and you're already at peace, okay? So I want you to know, very simple, the state. Don't think about, okay, after I have chemo, after I have my surgery, after I have my radiation, I'll be okay. No, you can be okay right now. That's very important. All right, don't set off genetic triggers. That means live in the cleanest environment that you can. Avoid toxins, avoid plastics and styrofoam, especially don't heat up your leftovers or food. You can store them in there, but don't heat them up in plastics and styrofoam because they're toxic. There's a database called cosmeticsdatabase.com. Look at the toxicity of your health and beauty products. Maybe you don't realize some of the sunscreen you're using can actually cause skin cancer. Some of the hair products that you're using can cause cancer, okay? Look at the parabens and other types of preservatives in these things. Look out for things that have microbeads. They're very bad for the environment, okay? Check it out yourself. And this is Environmental Working Group create, created this database and they self-regulate and it's a good go-to for people who are who have cancer and they want to do things better, okay? And medications, they're best for the short term, okay? But don't try to take all medications all the time. If you're already at a certain age, let's say over 50, and you're on six or seven medications, look into getting off those seven medications, okay? 
If you really need to be on them, fine. But actually, big pharma is not your friend. They want to make you a customer for life and they want you dependent on those medications. But what you need to do is get off those medications and live a life. And of course, natural medicine can help. Natural medicine is what? Chiropractic, acupuncture, naturopathy, homeopathy, herbs, okay? Diet, eating, exercise. Those things are natural medicine, okay? And that's what I'm hoping that some of you will go and do, okay? I love this cartoon. 100% natural remedies, and look what it is. 100% 100% pure snake oil. <laughs> all right. So, but I don't want you to think that all all natural medicine is snake oil. It's not. The, before there were medications and drugs. Okay. Uh, there were herbs and other supplements. Okay, and we know these things to work. So. Don't look at them as, uh, it's all phony, it's all baloney. No, it's not true. Big Pharma wants you to think that way. But the reality is a lot of natural herbs and spices, they can actually help enhance your life. Okay? Now look, what is it? The, uh, you, when you come to me, I'm going to ask you all of these questions. Have your blood tests, have your blood pressure, your BMI. How much do you exercise? What do you eat? What's your profession, your lifestyle, your family life, your hobbies, your history? I want to see a report of findings from your oncologist and, uh, and radiologists, okay? Uh, I want to look at your labs, blood pressure, BMI, lipid, uh, A1C, uh, glucose tests, CA25, and other tests, okay? If you come see me, I'm going to ask you for all of these things, and these are going to be a list that are very important. You know why? Because I want to get to know you right? And we could do this uh, via teleconferencing too, right? But we can also meet in person, okay? In my clinic, we only have scheduled times to come in. I, I only see new patients at a scheduled time, right? And I have to make sure that, uh, you know, we're free and clear so that why? You're, you guys are immunocompromised. Your immune system is weak. Now that we're in a pandemic, I have to be very careful with your health and my health. I certainly don't want to get sick, so. Definitely, I need to, I need to schedule time for you guys. Okay, and so you know, when I meet with you, I do this complete history, and I will make my suggestions based on on this. Okay, all right. Now, if you've got hypertension, what do you need to do? You need to exercise. Okay, if it's over 120 over 80, it's considered uh, hypertension. But if you are 120 over 80, it's considered normal. But men and smaller men and women generally read as 110 over 70. So you might want to check, okay? Check yourself. And blood pressure, one thing you have to do is instead of taking medication, if you increase your vascularity, you'll be better off, okay? And so with hypertension, you have a whole bunch of other problems, right? Headache, dizziness, fatigue, confusion, vision problems, uh, uh, chest pain, irregular heartbeat, difficulty breathing. You could even have blood in the urine. Untreated hypertension can lead to what? Stroke, heart disease, kidney failure, eye problems like blindness. No fun. Okay? So if you get off your butt, it's the first step to making yourself feel better. A lot of cancer patients have hypertension first and then get worse. Okay, let's look at high cholesterol. High cholesterol, you have to have LDLs and L HDLs in balance. LDLs are your bad cholesterol. HDL is your good cholesterol. Okay, if you have too much LDL cholesterol, what happens is these turn into plaques and they can cause blood, blood blockage, okay, to the heart. And you can have a heart attack because of it, all right? So if by eating more vegetables, okay, by exercising, you can get rid of this LDL and get better HDL to, to balance it out, okay? Number one factor of it is not because you didn't take your medication, it's because you're eating poorly, okay? And because you have obesity, there's a lack of exercise, you smoke. As you get older, you know, you have more changes with your body chemistry. And then if you have diabetes, that makes it even worse. So be careful, all right?
Uh, total cholesterol, less than 200 is best, but it also depends on your age, okay? And so I'm just giving you a little guideline here. I think I'll change the handout to be a little bit more clear and get rid of all these dots. I'm sorry about that, okay? We'll change it next time. All right, now statins have a lot of side effects. If you're on statins right now, I would advise you guys get rid of the statins, okay? And statins have a lot of side effects like what? Rashes, low platelet counts, you might have nausea, hair loss, liver inflammation, pancreatic inflammation, skin, skin rashes, erectile dysfunction, low sex drive, not fun, okay? And then you can have other issues with uh, muscle weakness and inflammation in the muscles, okay? Not, not good. So you have to look at it and see. Get rid of the statins, okay? Metabolic syndrome, right? Usually is caused by what? Metabolic syndrome is the combination, high blood pressure, high blood sugar, high cholesterol, belly fat, abnormal cholesterol, or triglyceride levels, okay? Diet, exercise, and medications improve it, but medications are not necessary. You can take herbal supplements. You can just improve it overall, okay? The main cause of these things is poor diet, lack of exercise, stress, okay? And you probably have to take an A1C test, and that's why I, I asked you for that, so that we know what's going on with regards to that, okay? All right, so anyway, this is a, a quick uh, understanding of what you are. If you're normal, pre-diabetic, or diabet uh, have full-blown diabetes, and what's going on in terms of uh, fasting blood sugar, if you fasted for at least 10 hours, and what your uh, blood sugar range is, okay? All right, let's look at diabetes type two. All right, we don't, we don't have to look at this. You can read up on this, right? But know that diabetes, has a lot of signs and symptoms, okay? And a lot of people who are overweight, not physically active, okay, are the ones who get diabetes type two. It's completely reversible by having a good BMI. It's completely reversible by exercising, okay? Now, of course, diabetes has various complications like what? Uh, heart and blood vessel disease, neuropathy, uh, nerve damage, kidney damage, eye damage, right? One of my good friends never had a problem, but he was a diabetic. And because he's a diabetic, he had to have four stints put into his coronary artery. Because why? He just discovered it during the lockdown. Uh, his, he wasn't, his heart was starting to hurt. His chest started to hurt. He went in and found the fact that, uh, you know, he had occlusion, blockage in the main blood vessel that supplies blood to his heart. Okay, and if you're a diabetic, you will slowly heal. Hearing can have impairment. You can have skin conditions, sleep apnea, Alzheimer's, okay? So anyway, keep a good blood sugar. Now, chemo brain, as I was talking about, chemo brain is typically caused by anemia. How can you get anemia when you have cancer? Well, because you're taking chemotherapy, it kills blood cells. Because it destroys blood cells, you will not have a lot of blood, right? As a result of it, right, you won't be feeling too good, right? So sleep changes, depression, fatigue, anxiety, all contribute to this. Because why? When you're undergoing cancer treatment, you're not very happy. So uh, lifestyle changes are very important. Meditation, sleeping properly, eating properly, okay, boosting your diet for a blood uh, Blood building diet will certainly help you, okay? Now, WebMD says the jury's still out about chemo brain, but if any of you know what chemo brain is, you've certainly seen, uh, yeah, it's a real phenomenon. And me treating cancer patients for the last 20 years, I certainly know when people, because why? People forget their, their appointments. People forget what tasks that they're supposed to do. They just veg out and totally forget everything, all right? So I know it's a very, very disheartening because they're having a hard time concentrating and thinking clearly, all right? And keeping a calendar, writing down things, writing down events, uh, writing, taking notes helps a lot. Um, um, how can we say? Getting enough sleep is really one of the best things for you to do, all right? And don't try to multitask. I have a saying for multitasking. Multitasking is a way for you to do many things poorly. 
all right? All right, you shouldn't try to always multitask. Concentrate on one thing at a time and then you'll do things better. But a diet rich in vegetables, there goes that green word again, okay? Can give your brain a boost, okay? Have smaller, more frequent meals and do some meditation. It helps a lot, all right? Acid reflux, this is something that happens a lot. So you might want to avoid citrus fruits and tomatoes and dairy products, okay? Avoid garlic, peppermint, and fish oil supplements and excessive carbs. These are things that all produce acid reflux. A lot of patients tell me, ever since they went through chemotherapy and radiation, they have acid reflux. So they're having difficulty, all right? And this is something that comes up because of the, of the chemo, all right? So we have to change it. Fatigue. Fatigue is the number one complaint of radiation therapy. All right, so cancer patients who are undergo radiation are the ones who have a hard time with fatigue. They're feeling low, they wanna stay in bed all the day, all day. So what would happen? The best thing is don't, uh, don't stay in bed all day. Exercise, eat a light meal, okay? Easily digested foods, and then you'll, you'll overcome your fatigue. Skin rashes. Skin rashes are a result of too much toxicity in the body. Of course, chemotherapy, we make it sound nice, but chemo is a poison to kill cancer. Because it's a poison to kill cancer, what it does is it vents on your skin, okay? And we have ways to help you detoxify uh, when, when you're getting through treatment. So that's why we are considered complementary medicine uh, when, when you're undergoing cancer treatment. Hair loss, a lot of people lose hair because of uh, cancer treatment, chemo. Okay, we can help you grow it back, all right, with herbs and supplement and acupuncture. Neutropenia, I don't know if any of you have gotten a shot for Neupogen. One Neupogen shot costs about $2,000, depending on insurance that you have. One shot of $2,000, but with herbs, Less than a few hundred dollars worth of herbs can also build up your white blood cell count. So I want you to know if you want to improve your uh, white blood cell counts and it's not life-threatening, herbs is the better way of doing it, okay? You can do it naturally. And one hint, you could do it naturally, not even by doing supplements. You can just eat mushrooms. More mushrooms, the better. How are we doing on time? We have about three minutes left. Okay, three minutes left. Okay, nausea and vomiting is very common in terms of, uh, of cancer treatment. Okay, certainly that's something we could do. Ginger tea is my recommendation, okay? What you do is take ginger tea and uh, just three slices of ginger in boiling water and you can sweeten it up to taste if you want to with honey or a little bit of rock sugar and certainly help you out. Anyway, that's what I wanted to share with you today. The rest of it, you can look at it. Uh, we can treat other specialty items like port pain, lymphedema, libido, menopause, things like that. You can look through the handouts, all right? I'm happy to answer any questions uh, that you might have.